Hello and welcome to Tech Deals MSI's B450 Tomahawk Motherboard, $109. Who should buy it? What CPU should you put on it? Should you consider spending more? Should you consider spending less? How well does it overclock? We're going to answer all those questions in today's video. You can see the motherboard installed on my test bench here. I have it turned up vertically so you can see it. I've installed both the Ryzen 5 2600 and 2600X. I have tested it both stock and overclocked, and we're going to take a detailed look at this motherboard today. Before we get to that, I want to talk to you briefly about Floatplane. Floatplane is the monthly subscription-only service hosted by Linus Media Group. For $3 per month, you get ad-free viewing, downloadable videos, early access videos. Many of these videos you're looking at right here are not yet on YouTube. They will be, but they're not yet. You get both of the Tech Deals channels, Tech Deals and Tech Deals Gaming, and exclusive videos. Visit to the Microsoft Store, our visit to the Tesla Model X, that's my daughter sitting right there. Those are not main channel videos, but those will never be on YouTube. And then of course, a bunch of benchmarks and some other things that you otherwise would not see. Now, there are other content creators there. Each one is $3 a month and it directly supports the creators. So if you want ad-free access, if you want early access, downloadable videos, and if you wanna know that you're supporting tech deals, please consider signing up using the link down in the video description below. For $109, the MSI B450 Tomahawk makes an excellent mid-range board for an excellent mid-range system. It's not designed for top-of-the-line computers, nor is it really meant for super budget systems. If you're putting together, say, a Ryzen 3 2200G ultra budget system, it might be a bit much. The $60 to $80 boards make more sense. Likewise, Ryzen 7 2700X frankly deserves a $150 to $200R X470 board at least. But for all the CPUs in the middle, this is very worth considering. From a Ryzen 5 2400G, to a Ryzen 5 2600 6 core 12 thread chip, to a Ryzen 7 1700 or 2700 non X chip, this makes a nice choice. It's got lots of features on it USB 3.1 Gen 2, both Type A and Type C, Intel Gigabit Ethernet rather than Realtek. Now, the onboard audio is Realtek, but it's an ALC 800 series 7.1 HD audio with optical out as an option, which is nice. And it has all the audio ports on the back for a surround sound system without having to use the front ports. So it does have a decent built-in audio system. Good video out jacks in the back if you want to use the APU or not put a dedicated card in. It does have an M2 slot that will take an NVMe solid state drive or a SATA M.2 drive, which is what I have installed here. The Crucial MX500 works very well. It has headers on the board for USB 2 and USB 3 ports on the front of your case, in addition to the ones on the back, and multiple PCI Express slots, including Crossfire support. It's a nice mid-range board for anything from about a Ryzen 5 2400G up to a Ryzen 7 non-X chip. Now that's all well and good, you say, but what about the X chips? What if you want to do a 2600X or a 2700X? To be honest, I would spend the extra $20 to move from the B450 Tomahawk to the X470 Gaming Plus at a minimum. You might want to go one or two steps above that, but at least go to the X470 Gaming Plus. 129 it doesn't get you really any more features on the board. Same onboard audio, Realtek ALC 800 series, same Intel Gigabit Ethernet, same single M.2 slot, basically same Crossfire support. There is no SLI support on this board. These two boards are extremely similar in most respects, except one that's very important. Power delivery, the voltage regulation. This has a single 8-pin CPU power connector, and it has less VRMs on it than this does. And this has an 8-pin plus a 4-pin for better overclocking support. That's what you're paying your extra $20 for. If you're getting an X chip, get an X470 with better power delivery. It's not just about the chipset itself, but it's about the power delivery that manufacturers choose to put on it. And so that's where I would make the extra step. If you don't plan to overclock, if you plan to use one of the non-X chips, there's no need to buy the X470. It doesn't do anything for you that the B450 doesn't at stock speeds. The performance is identical. The features are basically identical. It's just all about the overclocking, which ironically is not about the chipset because they'll both overclock, but it's about the power delivery. 
So what all do you get in the box when you buy a B450 Tomahawk? Well, of course you get the motherboard itself, which is already installed on my test bench, you saw that. I turned it up so that you could see the IO shield on the back. It's screen printed and very nice. There is a PS2 port back there, an HDMI 2.0 port, a DVI port. Now those ports only work if you install one of the APUs, such as the Ryzen 5 2400G. There are two USB 2.0 ports. There are two USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports, and then two USB 3.1 Gen 2 ports, one Type-A, one Type-C, 10 gigabit per second. You can see the six audio jacks of the Realtek ALC 800 series audio for the 7.1 surround sound system, and of course the Intel gigabit ethernet. What else do you get? You get two SATA cables for data for connecting a two and a half inch or three and a half inch hard drives or SSDs. You get a red MSI sticker for the front of your case. You get a fold-out pamphlet from MSI advertising their stuff. You get a card reminding you to register your motherboard. You get a very nice drink coaster to put your coffee... Wait a minute, that's a driver's CD. This is a drink coaster. Please don't ever use these to set anything up. You want to download the latest drivers from AMD. You want to download the latest drivers from MSI's website. Really, frankly, I don't know why they still include these. They do, but yeah, don't use that. They include a quick start guide, and this is actually really useful because not only does it say, here's how you put your CPU in, but it has important pinouts, such as the front panel motherboard connectors, how to connect your reset switch, power switch, LEDs, etc. I actually used this quick start guide when I put this on here, didn't even have to go to the user manual. The user manual, this is all in English, it's one language, it's very, very good. It explains everything on this board, all of the connectors, every pin, every header on the board is explained in detail, and it goes through the BIOS as well to explain in basic detail all of the BIOS functions. And that's pretty much it. It's a mid-range B450 motherboard that will work well with any of those CPUs that I mentioned. Build yourself a mid-range computer. I did install Windows 10 on this. Uh, everything worked out of the box without any problems. Went to AMD's website, downloaded the latest drivers, no problem there. I installed it on a Crucial MX500 M.2 SATA SSD. Everything worked first time, every time. When running system stability stress tests at stock speed, both the, the Ryzen 5 2600 and the Ryzen 5 2600X were 100% stable for extended time. Overclocking results were poor. If you want to overclock, at least get that X470 right there. The VRMs on it are better. You will get better overclocking results. I would not recommend this board if overclocking is your goal. But if stock clock speeds and excellent power efficiency is your goal, I had no problems with 100% stability. Like this video if you like it. Share it with your friends if you loved it. Remember to subscribe to my channel with that big, huge red button directly below and click the bell notification icon next to it to be notified when all my videos come out. Otherwise, YouTube doesn't send out very many notifications. Comment section down below for your comments. What'd you think of this video? Likes and dislikes. And then check the links in the video description. Link to Amazon and Newegg for the CPUs. These two motherboards all down there. Those are affiliate links. Check current prices because sometimes one site's cheaper than the other. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you guys next time.